This holiday season, skip the store-bought ornaments. Join me in creating a one-of-a-kind Christmas wreath ornament that will add a cozy charm to your holiday decor. and welcome to Bochinot Macrame and to our Christmas holiday series 2024. In this video, I'm going to add another unique handmade ornament to your collection with a daisy knot pattern mini wreath with beads. If you guys have been following me for some time, you'll know that I went on a little daisy knot craze this summer and I wanted to find a way to incorporate that into the holiday season. The daisy knot pattern isn't too difficult to learn, so if you haven't made it before, that's okay. I walk through it step by step in this video, so you should be able to follow along pretty easily. I am so excited to show you guys how to make this, and I hope you'll have fun doing it as well. And with that said, let's jump right in. For this wreath ornament, you will need a few materials and supplies. To start off, you'll need some macrame cord and the cord I'll be using for this little wreath is a four millimeter hollow braided cord. And so the outer diameter of this hollow braided cord is four millimeter, but because it is hollow, so there's not another strand filling up the hollow space inside, it does mean that when you twist or knot with this cord, it does work more like a three millimeter cord. Hollow braided cord is great because it is a little bit more flexible, softer on the hands, and I personally think it's easier to use. I'll be using the color terracotta and army green, Christmas colors, perfect for this mini wreath. Now, as you can see, we've used some beads. For this particular demonstration, I'm going to use some silver beads. These beads are approximately, I'd say about eight millimeter in diameter for the entire bead. And then let's see what the whole size is. The whole size is almost five millimeter. So it is pretty, tight when it comes to threading through two strands of three millimeter cords which is similar to the four millimeter hollow braided cord but it still does work so if you're planning to use three millimeter single strand cord for this pattern or four millimeter hollow braided cord you can fit through two strands of those into this bead if you're using four millimeter single strand or four millimeter three ply, I'd recommend going up a size with the bead of at least a seven millimeter or eight millimeter hole for four millimeter cord. And then lastly, we did top it off with a bow, a ribbon. And because we are using a silver colored theme for this particular wreath, we're going to use a silver colored ribbon. I got this at my local craft store at Michael's. You can probably find similar ribbons at a dollar store or your local craft store as well. I'll be using a macrame board to make this pattern. If you don't have a macrame board or cork board, that is totally okay. You can just make it on a stable surface like a desk with some tape. Now I'll be using the green color cord as the anchor cord all the way through the daisy knot patterns and then the terracotta color cord as the working cord for the daisy knot patterns. So to begin, we are going to take a strand of the green cord at 90 centimeters long. We're gonna fold it in half and then on the loop end, so right here, we're just going to hold that part down. So mark where the center spot is. And then underneath, we're going to overlap the cords together like this. 
Then with the longer 300 centimeter long red cord, fold it in half, we're going to make a reverse Lark's head knot onto the overlapped green cords. So bring it up top and then pull the ends through the loop. Pull on the ends to tighten first and then pull on the anchor cord ends to tighten. Then re-tighten everything. Okay, once everything is nice and snug, I'm just going to re-pin it so that I'm pinning it onto the pattern. And then now to start our first daisy knot pattern, bring the right anchor cord down, take the working cord on the right, go over through the right, tighten, and then under through the right to tighten. And then on the left, over through the left to tighten. And then under and through the left to tighten. So what we have just made is a vertical lark's head knot on both sides. So half of our daisy knot pattern is complete. And now we're going to thread through our first bead. So we will need a total of nine beads, but we're gonna take our first bead here. And we're just gonna thread it through. Now, this can be done easier with some tape on the ends. The first one is pretty easy to get in. The other side might be a little harder because we don't have too much room and space in the bead. So we're gonna thread it through the opposite side. So we went left to right here. We're gonna go right to left this time. Now, another tool that you can use is, I'm gonna use a crochet hook to pull the end through. Just so I don't have to put on the tape and then take it off after. So it's just like that. I was able to easily pull it through and then now pull on both ends so that the bead sits nicely in the center, like so. And then now we're going to finish off another Vertical locks head knot on both sides. So taking the right side green cord and then the red cord over through the right. And then under and through the right. And then the same thing on the left side. Make sure everything is consistently tightened. So over through the left, under and through the left. And then now to close off this first daisy pattern, overlap the green anchor cords again, take the right working cord and over and then through the right side for a half inch knot. Tighten it, then you should still have a loop here. Take the left end, bring it through, over, through the left side. Tighten it for a half inch knot on the left. And then last but not least, pull on the anchor cords to tighten everything up. And then our first daisy pattern is now complete. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to angle it that way because we do want to form a nice circle. So instead of making it in a straight line, we're just gonna go off an angle now. 
So we're gonna start our next daisy knot pattern similar to how we started the first one. On the right side, vertical larset knot, left side, vertical larset knot. Now we're going to thread through a bead. Finish off with a vertical arc and knot on both sides. Okay, now that we've finished with two daisy knot patterns, we're going to make a total of nine of these. So I'm just gonna repeat this seven more times all around, just making sure that it'll curve together nicely. So as you can see, we have a slight curve here. So just continue making it sideways and then continue moving it, shifting around so that it can curve together nicely. So continue with seven more underneath. Once done, this is what the pattern should look like. So as you can see, it's naturally curving over. If yours is still relatively straight, that's okay. You can just manually try to fold it and bend it over like so, so that when you mash the ends together, forms a nice circular shape. So once we are here, what we're going to do is we're going to thread two cords through the original loop. So what we're going to do is with the bottom two cords, we're going to thread them through top down on the other side. So using a crochet hook for this part, we're gonna pull the bottom two cords through. Now, if you did make your loop a little loose enough, you may not need to use a crochet hook for this part. You may be able to weave it through, maybe by pulling on the loop and making some space. But I'm using crochet hook just for ease. Okay, so we got it through to the back. And then now what we're going to do is we're gonna turn the pattern upside down and with the two red cords, so the two anchor cords, or sorry, working cords that we use to make the daisies, we're just going to tie a nice tight double overhand knot. Once done, I'm just going to thread the ends through two loops at the back. 
So I'm just gonna thread this cord end through a loop on this side. And then do the same thing with the other end. Find a loop at the back and then thread it through. So once you have it weaved through the back and it looks good at the front, like this, we can snip off the excess cord ends here at the back. And then with the two green cords up at the top, we're actually just going to thread the other green cord through that original loop as well. So that they're together. So once they're together at the top like this, we're going to figure out how long of a handle we want. And then we're gonna tie an overhand knot. And then we're going to snip off the excess here. Okay, so last but not least, we are going to add the ribbon at the top. So I have a 35 centimeter ribbon here. It's probably a, a little bit longer than you need, but I like to cut a bit of extra just to make sure that I have enough. So I have 35 centimeters here. I've made two loops and then I'm going to make a bow. All right, so once the bow is done, place it on here. Looks great. It's actually the perfect length. So 35 centimeter bow for this is perfect. So you'll need a second shorter piece of ribbon. This is around 10 centimeters. And to do this, we're going to thread it through that top loop. So using a crochet hook, push it through from the back and then we're gonna bring that top end through. Make sure you get it through correctly. So this is where we wanna pull it through. Okay, so once we have it through to the back, straighten it out like this. And then we're going to place the bow underneath. Now this method is just so that we don't have to use glue for this project. It saves you from having to bring out another tool supply to get this done, which you don't have to. Now for ease, if you do want to use glue to glue the bow on, you can go ahead and do that. But all you need is just a separate ribbon at about 10 centimeters long. We're just gonna tie a double overhand knot at the back. Now, I think we just cut enough core, uh, ribbon to do that. And then once done, this is how it looks like at the back. So turn it back around and you have a nice, beautiful ribbon here. I'm actually going to adjust it so that it just sits nicely at the top like so and then lastly if you want to cut the ribbon on an edge you can do that just gonna even out the other side and our daisy wreath ornament is now complete Thank you.
And that's a wrap with our Daisy wreath ornament tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed the process of making the Daisy knot patterns along with incorporating the shiny beads to make the whole pattern stand out even more. Not only will these brighten up your Christmas tree, and they will also make lovely handmade gifts to loved ones. If you guys are enjoying this macrame Christmas series so far and have suggestions on other ornaments you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. For more Christmas decor ideas, we have several over on our Patreon. If you're interested, head on over to patreon.com slash for more details. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.